I flew uh, the very first combat mission over Japan, the very last combat mission over Japan on August 14th. The atomic bomb was dropped on August 6th on Hiroshima. Uh, I was strafing airfields around Tokyo that day, came back and heard about the bombing, wiping out one city with one bomb, and I quite didn't believe it. We didn't think we'd ever have to fly another mission over Japan. We felt that the war was over. Uh, that wasn't so. I was working in a steel mill. 12 or 12.30 on December 7th, I heard the radio about this attack on Pearl Harbor, and I decided at that moment that I was going to fly fighter planes against the Japanese. I was sent overseas to the 78th Fighter Squadron in Honolulu from October 1943 until the war ended in 1945. December of 1944, we set sail for Saipan, Guam, brought into a briefing room and shown a relief map of a small island called Iwo Jima, which the Marines were going to invade. 67,000 Marines landed on Iwo Jima on February 19, 1945. And we flew from Saipan to Iwo Jima on March 7, 1945, when the Marines had enough land to protect our airplanes on the first dirt airstrip. And I saw things that I never thought I would see, and it didn't disturb me. I saw masses of dead Japanese bodies being pushed into mass graves, and I smelled the horrible smell of dead, rotting human beings. We hated the Japanese for what they did at Pearl Harbor, and the propaganda told us that they were four, uh, four eyes, they wore glasses, they didn't speak a language that we understand, that they were not people, they were just not people. And I suppose that we as Americans, to them, were not people either. The atomic bomb was dropped on August 6th on Hiroshima. Uh, I was strafing airfields around Tokyo that day. On the 13th of August, we were called into a briefing room and told that we were going to have to fly again. During the briefing, my wingman, 19-year-old Phil Schlomberg, leaned over to me and said, Captain, if we go on this mission, I'm not coming back. And I was quite shocked by that, surprised by that. And I asked him, what do you mean? And he said, it's the feeling I have. And when we took off the next morning, I just told Schlomberg to stay on my wing that we're never going to make it to Japan. We did make it to Japan. We were strafing airfields near Japan. So I looked over and Schlomberg was on my wing. I gave him a thumbs up. He gave me a thumbs up. And I was leading three other airplanes, a flight of four planes. And I went into some very heavy weather on the way out to sea to pick up the B-29. And when I came out into the clear air, Schlomberg was gone. Nobody saw him. Nobody heard a radio call. When we landed on Iwo Jima, we found out that while we were strafing the airfield around Tokyo, the Japanese had surrendered three hours before we began our mission. So we fought the last combat mission, and he was the last man killed by the Japanese in World War II on a fighter mission. In October 1983, I went to Japan for the first time, and I was shocked to find that the Japanese were human beings, were people, uh, great people. So on March 5th, 1988, I attended a wedding of my son to a Japanese woman in, Jap in Japan. And now I have three Japanese grandchildren. I love them as much as I do three American grandchildren. There's no difference between how I feel about them or how I feel about any human being. We're all the same. <laughs>